What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Runners Club podcast. I am your co-host, Courtney Phillips. And that over there, yeah, with the mm, is Ian Gonzalez. <laughs> What's good, y'all? How we feeling? Another episode. Um, I wish I was doing this episode on my, my back with a pillow <laughs> and a blanket. <laughs> and a blanket, yeah. You need a pillow under your head and under your knees. I'm so happy this this uh, this chair reclines. Is how I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. But like I said, welcome back to another episode of the Runners Club podcast. Appreciate y'all for still being here, still riding with us, still making it happen. I'm going to say this at the top of the episode today because I just feel like, um, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to pop my collar a little bit because I just feel like these last few episodes y'all been getting have been very premium. And I would really love it if you like, share, follow, do all of those things because we've been having some fun. Our last episode, um, oh, wait, wait, hold on. Let me not say that because our last episode that I know that we dropped while we're recording this, this Cam's yeah. episode. Yeah. But I don't know if that's the last episode y'all It's heard. not. This is episode uh, 68. <laughs> oh, shit. And, and today we that dropped like... 66. So, yeah, we're a little behind, so, but right. that gives us some wiggle room, you know? Say we want to take a week off. Y'all get the content. Y'all oh, get the content. Getting the we got, content, we got it. We got plenty for you. You just sit tight, you the... know? Yes. Yeah. So the best way to support us, please like, rate, Leave a review, do something because we're trying to do more things. We're trying to give you more content. So, but you know, you talk really to us to nice, us, please. Oh, yeah, talk you to know. you know, talk to us nice because I feel like we talk to y'all nice. Use your so. low voice. <laughs> I don't. We don't. I don't. We don't like this motherfucker right now. <laughs> Gosh. So, how we, you feeling? Quirk? I, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I um, my aura ring. Gave me a uh, sleep score of 90, which is like as high as it goes. And I haven't seen that for weeks. And Whoa. my readiness score was like a solid 84, which again, haven't seen that for weeks. So I feel how I I, I feel my, the way I feel reflects that. Mm. And uh, so, you know, <laughs> rest, hydration, rest. Food, all of these things have worked what, very what? well for me. What does my wolf say? Hold on. What does my wolf say? Because, <laughs> okay, I got an 80 today. I don't feel like 80, but I got an 80 today. <laughs> Did you, do you happen to know what your, what your uh, score was like the morning that we started TSP? TSP, yeah. Uh, I have been avoiding like looking at my. <laughs> <laughs> My result, like my insights, like because also it looks like it, like maybe I meant, I don't know. So it's not showing. Wait, what's today? Okay, that was okay. So we left what Thursday? No, Friday. We left on Friday, the 24th. My red, (laughs) my sleep score was 53. My, That's about uh, 52% better than mine. Oh, yeah. And then my pay, and then my readiness score was 56. Terrible. Trash. Oh, my God. Um, and then it says today's for rest. And it's like, uh, well, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> didn't, I did not rest. I did not rest. Uh, and, like, from that point, though, it steadily went up, um, you know, but definitely stayed under 80. Um, so I, I've been, and, and that like, you know, I came down from running the marathon the weekend before, and then y'all came into town on Wednesday. So it was just like, I've been rallying, rallying for the, for the crew, for the runners in my life, for my Chicago run fam. And, um, it definitely showed. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So, um, for y'all, like, because for y'all who may be new or may not know what we're talking about, we talked about the Speed Project today. Courtney and I was together. We have been, we haven't been together in the same place for a very long time. Feels like almost I a year. Missed her. Yeah, it's been like almost a year. I yeah. didn't, I missed her. So it's really nice to be in the same city, in the same space, and to get that 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 good old Courtney energy, you know, that we all 
love and endear the most. But I mean, like, I don't even, I don't like, we supposed to, the Speed Project grew, we're supposed to have like a debriefing in a few days and stuff like that. And even yeah. for myself, knowing that me and you was going to talk about it here on a podcast, I don't even know where it starts. Like, like, well, how do we talk about the Speed Project experience? My my experience started off wild. Like, do I start from before I got on the plane? Or do I start from, like, 4 a.m. when we was just running down the street with all of the crews <laughs> trying to get to our RVs? <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. I feel like I'm just, like, a mere, you know, crew member, you know, <laughs> assisting <not> <laughs> assisting the group oh across the the state lines. But, like, I I, like... Yeah, so I'll let you lead and I'll just interject when it's my turn. Okay, listen, y'all. Listen, we're going to start. What, what, when did we leave? We left Wednesday morning. We left Chicago Wednesday morning. So Tuesday night, okay? My, my beautiful, amazing fiance decides we're not going to cook dinner tonight, okay? It's too much. Got a lot of packing to do. And I want apples. So I'm going to go to the store, I'm going to get some apples, and while I'm out, I'm going to get some portillos. We're going to eat like shit tonight, and it will be great for the rest of the trip, okay? So my baby, she gets out here, I'm at home, I'm like still packing, she gets in the car, she goes get her apples, she goes and grab portillos, she got me the steak sandwich, slightly dipped, you know what I'm saying, with the large fries, she got herself a milkshake in the same situation, we ready to go. She's on her way home, she gets to the bread like, She stops. She obeys traffic law. She stopped before the little white line and everything. She goes to pull off and the car says, you know what? No, no, I'm not going to do this. Just just dies on her as she's crossing the fucking intersection. Okay. What? She got into a car accident? No, 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 no. She didn't get into a car accident. Her car broke down. Oh. Okay. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, y'all. If y'all I'm like, Brett, who hit her? What? No, like it just like just cools through the intersection, decides it's done working Damn. and stuff like that. So I I hop up, I get on AAA, renew my membership real quick, call an Uber, go to meet her. Whole time we thinking we we have our dinner in the car. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Me and my son, we get in an Uber, we go meet her. I send him back with his and Anaya's food. Me and Karen have our dinner in the car waiting on the tow truck driver. Right. All the time we thinking it's the transmission. Uh-huh. I'm going to find out the axle on the car broke. Shit. So. That's a whole functioning situation. You can't. Okay. Go ahead. Gee, we were supposed she was she was supposed to come back home. We was going to eat and then we was going to get in a car and drive to Denise's crib in the city. Uh-huh. And then and go stay to the there? airport with her. Right, because okay. we got to catch the plane. And like, we got to be at the airport at like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. That's done. That doesn't happen. Find yeah. out Denise didn't order pizza. She oh, like, wow. She got the house ready. You know what oh, I'm wow. saying? She like, come through. We finna kick it before we go out of town. Right. None of that happens. The right way. We get it. We lay down. We get up an hour and a half later for our Uber. And then we take ourselves to the airport. So we working on roughly hour and a half of sleep, get to the airport. Now the check-in process was fun as hell with the whole group and everything. Mm -hmm. Ordering the flight. Shouts out to Austin for not using his pre-check and going through security with us. Just (laughs) experiencing that. That's love. Because I would have left y'all and been like, see you on the other side. I'll wait over there. I'm not waiting in this line. He did not do that on the way home. He was like, I'm going to see (laughs) y'all. Bye. (laughs) Yeah. Right. So, shout out to him for being a rider. But we get on the plane, we fly for five and a half hours to LA. I didn't know that was that far on the plane. I thought planes moved really, really fast. Fly for five and a half hours. I mean, if you shout drove, out. it would have been 30 hours. So, shout out to <laughs> Angela. She ended up with the window seat. She she closed the motherfucking curtains on the window and was sleep the entire trip. We got to see no mountains, no clouds, no other cities. She closed it Is that, and mm, went nope. to sleep. <laughs> oh, it was shit. hilarious. So we ain't bother her. Me and Karen let us sleep. 
we get to LA, LA was beautiful. LA, LA is really, really, really sunny, really, really gorgeous, but also really is like dusty. It's like a layer on everything and stuff like that. And it's like, it's like if I, I feel like if I blow on it, it'll look like the city of Oz. Like I was, it'd be like shiny and brand new, but it was just like a light coating of dust on everything. But it was like the palm trees was giving energy, the sun was shining. It was like ice. I, this is my first time being in California and I can truly feel that the West Coast has a completely different energy from anywhere else in the country and stuff like that. Because as far as West, I've been in Tucson, Arizona, which mm -hmm. does not give that West Coast energy and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And mm -hmm. it was, it was, it was beautiful. It was fire to step off the plane into California and to drive up these streets with like these tall ass like palm trees everywhere. And it was like, and it was interesting too because like our our um, what do you call that? Our Airbnb was mm -hmm. in um, Inglewood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I mean, even the part you showed us was like beautiful and nice, but I mean, I don't want to say it felt like the hood, but it just felt like, it just felt familiar. It felt like a different familiar. It felt like if the hood was always happy. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, that's like, how I that's how I see it too because it's like cuz we didn't I mean, you know, you guys came in and the the mission was we're running TSP and like like I I live in View Park Windsor Hills and so my area is is decent but it's not Beverly Hills like it's not, you know. Yeah. Um it's off Slauson, you know, if you know, you know. Um, and like it's the it like is it's like because View Park is is nice. Ladera Heights is nice. Mm -hmm. You know, Frank Ocean sings mm -hmm. about it and all that stuff. That shit, that's nice. Mm -hmm. That's like, it's Black Beverly Hills. And like, people are living very luxurious. Uh, mm -hmm. But everything is like hood adjacent for the most part. And, you know, it and it, but that's also Chicago too. Like, yeah. but in a different way. And then we were, I was talking to you about this, how like Chicago gets spoiled because it's like, it is like one of the cleanest like metropolitan, like big cities in the United States. It's the third largest city nice. in the United States, but motherfuckers keep that month that they keep that city clean. You cannot, people cannot simply be on Michigan Avenue and pop up a tent. You're not yeah. going to see that. You're yeah. not going to see that, but you could be in Beverly Hills yeah, yeah. and you can see a whole tent community. Yeah. 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 When you said that, I was like, Oh, like I get why everywhere I go, I feel like, a little superior because I'd be like, what is going on over <laughs> this here? Shit dirty. This? <laughs> right. Like, like, yeah. Y'all yeah. don't have nobody for this. Yeah. Where's the street cleaners? <laughs> the fuck? Uh, yeah. And the crazy part is, is LA got street cleaners, but it's different. Like they don't clean like down. Oh my God. If you ever saw downtown, people are like downtown. <laughs> like, yeah. It, there's some nice parts of downtown, I'm sure, in LA, but like there's that's like where like Skid Row is and stuff like that. And like you yeah, can yeah, get yeah. it can get grungy very quickly. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. and it definitely took me a while to get used to because there was times there was like a trip, that, and I don't mean to completely get off tangent, but just on this topic of the way LA looks, it's like you can go to the super nice parts, but like when I came and was looking for places to live, I remember like. I remember one of my trips when we just were looking in neighborhoods, I was like, why does everything look so damn dirty? Like, why does it look like this? Why? Yeah. And to your point, it's like, it's like a, is it, maybe it's a layer of dust or whatever. But then like, if you spend enough time, you start to see it from a different perspective. And then all of a sudden mm -hmm. it's like beautiful all the time. And even the dirty parts don't even look that dirty anymore. And that's kind of where I'm at. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's a little different. Yeah. And it, yeah. I love yeah, it for yeah. what it I is. Mean, I wish there was a better word than dirty because dirty has such a negative connotation. Dusty. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, dusty. You know what I'm saying? Even that yeah. like from the city from <laughs> Chicago. That's that's horrible. That's an insult but, too. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Whole ass insult. Like but, but we mean it in the most literal sense, like dirt, like dirt. 
yeah. dirty dirt. It's like it is it's like sand yeah. and dirt everywhere. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. It's like it's, it looks like every building just came from the beach. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks like. But next time um, I have to say, next time you the, come though, what? I would no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, next time you come though, I'll sh- like I'll show you that it really isn't that dirty. Like it, you know. I'll sh- I'll we can go hiking. We can go to the to hey. the ocean. We can go to the cute beaches. I, I need to you know, come we out can there. have a I good need to time. Come out there to go on the ocean. Yeah. I need to come out there with a bathing suit because when we went when we went to see the Bandit pop up at Santa Monica or wherever yeah. that shit was at, it was about Venice. The water. Mm-hmm. Venice. Yeah, it was Venice mm-hmm. Beach and it's like. That like the like Anna was like Anna answers was being sarcastic about me seeing the water, but I was like really really amazed at seeing the water. Yeah, I, like the water was so loud. <laughs> it was like so much water, and it was like the close I got, it was just so loud, and the beach was so like long, and the water was crashing. It was so far away, like you could just feel the power of the ocean, like. Like Lake Michigan is fucking huge. Lake Michigan is not a lake; it's a sea. Okay, <laughs> but like it, it's it, a great it, lake. You feel it's a really great lake, but like mm-hmm. it just pales in comparison to the power that you feel of the crashing waves from the mm-hmm. Pacific Ocean. Yeah, it's like, different. Mm-hmm. Like, touching that water, feeling it like. I would love to be in that, but it it was also it looked terrifying too. Oh yeah, it was just like a lot of it. Like I felt mm-hmm. the vastness of the ocean, and that was mm-hmm. like that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and it's there was like mountains out there, yeah. mountains behind the ocean, like about like right there, like to the yeah. right. It was like to it was the right. Cloudy, yeah, you so see you it past. See it. Yeah, towards like <laughs> Malibu, you see it past. It's like uh, that's like Malibu area. Yeah. That mm-hmm. shit was weird as hell because like I couldn't see the mountains like perfectly clear. Mm-hmm. It was like the clouds kind of cleared up just enough for you to see like the presence of a monster just behind the fog, just looking down at you and the and the water. I was like, this yeah. is fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I would love for you to come back and like just have a good time. And we can run still, but like mm-hmm. good time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause most it we had a really beautiful Airbnb in Inglewood. Um, unfortunately, with our budget constraints, we wasn't able to get one big enough for everybody to be there. So mm-hmm. me and Karen actually had to stay in the RV, which you know, Karen, she a little roughneck. She was fine with that. Like she was cool, but like I was really excited to stay in the RV for some reason. And stuff like that. It was really fun sleeping in there and like just like going to bed at night and like waking up in the morning and stuff like that, getting that like little blue tinge coming through the windows and stuff and just stepping out of the RV doors and stuff like that. It was, it was super, it was super cool. The difficult part was figuring out where to park the RV. And so yeah. we ended up, uh, the first night we ended up staying at the Speed Project headquarters and they parked yeah. the lot. Mm-hmm. Um, which they had like a little security guard. So me and Karen felt like mad safe all night because he was like parked like right in front of our RV and his Mustang. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was that was like really nice. So I could like sleep. I didn't feel like I needed to protect Karen because I would hear if his protection failed and I'd be like, all right, cool, I got time, you know? <laughs> um, but what I didn't realize was I forgot that the HQ was not airport adjacent, but it was probably on airport land because, I mean, there were planes like landing and taking off right above the RV into the yeah. wee hours of the night. Yeah, and that's just loud. Loud as fuck. But <sighs> I did learn that planes don't fly 24-7. Yeah. Well, not into the airport 24-7. Like, yeah. It's the time where they, like, turn them off. Yeah, especially national. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty cool. And then but, the second night we slept in your uh your my garage. Yeah, exactly. So um I feel like you guys are toasty out there or like cozy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It never really got super cold and no. stuff like that. But oh the weather. 
<laughs> I try. So look, can I just preface this by saying that I tried to tell y'all that it was cold? I really did. did. I really was like, yeah, everybody was looking at me like, I don't know, all the years before, it's been very hot for the TSP and everybody talks about how hot it is, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, maybe, maybe, but this weather that I'm feeling on my skin right now, day to day, that's some cold shit. And I'm like, bring some motherfucking sweats, okay? Bring some long, long things to run in, like cover your body, unless you want to be out here just cold for no reason. Oh my God, listen, the weather was weird as fuck. So, to, like, so speak about this because, like, the weather before we got there, like, y'all had, like, the rain of decades, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, y'all have been in a drought for, like, three, four years, and all of the water that y'all needed came in, like, three days. Not you saying, so, y'all, like, I'm a L.A. native. I don't want people to... <laughs> you there. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Your ID is the LA ID. <laughs> you know what I'm okay. saying? You was out there driving. You was out there driving with no GPS. Okay. You were just like, <laughs> oh, yeah. this one is over there. Like she was navigating. She was like letting us know what grocery stores to go to and shit like that. Like, nah. She was making an executive decision. You are uh what 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 do they call them? A Los Angeles, a Los uh, Angelinian or something? Some shit. I don't even know. Yeah. Two thousand percent. So Y'all, y'all had low key like had like the worst weather. Y'all had a tornado in downtown LA. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what the day before we got there? I have no explanation for these things other than like global warming. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was raining. It was really crazy. It was raining. I think people were saying that the TSP, like, I was concerned that, because people were like, yeah, you know, normally, like, there's areas that have, like, turned into lakes where you would normally run through. And then, like, the, people are being so dramatic. And then we get out there and, like, I didn't, I don't know, there's none of that shit. Not, we saw, I saw one puddle. But, but no, I but also it was the desert. So that shit probably dried up really fast. But yeah. We saw pictures of roads being like flooded out, like from because the solo runner started on Tuesday. Okay, we didn't start until um until Friday, Friday morning. Yeah, but so even solo runners yeah. got the brunt of all of that, like really bad conditions mm-hmm. along the route. Mm-hmm. But me and Cameron realized something: like the desert was so lush and green mm-hmm. because of all of the rain. Yeah, but it does get lush, like. It does get green, like, because what I've noticed, too, is I like, obviously, this is my first year here. I only know so much, but like listening to my sister-in-law talk about like living there here for the past two years, it's like L.A. does have seasons. It does get cold in the winter and like it, I mean, it, it dips down, like it's been dipping. Like it's obviously not the same as no, it's not, usually by now I've heard that it would be warm again, but like it does have seasons. And then like during this time, like when it's not blisteringly hot outside, you have um, this greener time where like things get more lush. Mm -hmm. Right now though, it's like, I was reading about like, we're about to get like a super bloom of like poppies and stuff like that in the hills because of all the rain. So yeah, it is different, but it also isn't crazy. But also the desert isn't always just brown all the time. There is times where like shit blooms. And this, I'm assuming, is like the time that it would bloom because it it would be the time, the colder, rainier times of the year. Okay. That but, makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. But it was um, gorgeous, though. It was, it was, it was amazing. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So we spent a couple of days there. You know, we went Wednesday to, to Friday, all Wednesday, yeah. all Thursday. We had a really dope breakfast. We went to a really dope breakfast spot. Um, picked by Courtney. The service there was amazing. Okay. Yeah, they were so nice. They like, they was like, let me just say they called you and everything. Oh my God. Like, yeah. I don't remember the name, but I was like, they what was that place called? I'm when I, when I think about it, I'll say, but like, 
Cause that was just to shout them out. Cause like, I was like, yeah, you know, I have like 14 people coming for breakfast and like, oh, we have this little private little room area space off to the side. We could just put you in there. And he, and he's just like, oh, I'll just call the waitress staff in the morning for uh, waitress staff now who are coming in the morning to let them know that you're coming. And we get there and they're like, do you want individual checks? I'm like music to our ears. Okay. Music. Yeah. And they just, yeah, they took care of us. Everybody had a good breakfast. You led a really good meeting prep time. I will say like, these are the things that if you're preparing for TSP, if you're preparing for an adventure race or like, uh, you know, relay long distance race, it's like the, you need the prep time. You need to touch base with your team and you can't just like hop in the RV and be like, okay, hey, let's go. Like, no, you know, like, I mean, you guys did a really good job of like, okay, you have what, 12 runners, you split them into three groups, three teams. And then it's like the whole strategy was when a team is out there with the, the follow car and then the RV jumps to where the teams exchange. And that was how we did it. And that's how we just kept going, kept going, kept going. And I think when I also, so I just want to break that down at least a little bit for our listeners, because I think there's a lot of people and groups who have considered doing these types of races, but don't have anyone to reference or an experience to reference in their community to be like, how do we do this correctly? Or what is, yeah. show me an example of your experience. No, 2000%. There was a lot of planning going on. And I, I you know, I have to give a shout out to, you know, Gabe, Rosalie, Karen, Devin, um, uh, these are the people that I know all back. And it doesn't take away from anybody else who participated and stuff like that, but who I just felt like really, really, really brought some structure to the planning thing, like with the training leading up to it, all Simeon as well, Simeon and Angela, you know, with some uh, training leading up to it the prep of the routes and the map, the the us coming up with the with the plans for the runners on how we was gonna run, how we was gonna set up the teams and stuff like that. Like all of these things really, really made a difference. Having a conversation, either whether it was at our weekly Tuesday meetings via Zoom or just for me personally being able to pick up the phone and talk to Gabe about options for uh vehicles, you know, like like, honestly, like, for me, just having somebody that I can pick up the phone and just talk through things with and stuff like mm -hmm. that, because sometimes, like, I, I'm able to solve problems when I'm able to talk about them out loud and stuff yeah. like that. So, like, that that was beautiful. And if you plan on doing the Speed Project or something like this, I do recommend having a planning community com committee and starting from starting well before the race all the way up until the night before the race. Like, I mean, we went over so many things that we had so many redundant conversations about the same thing over and over again, trying to drill it and making sure people understood it and things like that. Um, the meeting at the uh, at the breakfast table, I was very productive. People figured it out. I lost control of the meeting very well, <laughs> very quickly. I don't but... even think you did. I just feel like you thought you did, but I feel like everybody, like, I was like, okay, next thing. Like, cause people of course are going to go off on a tangent when you bring up an, a subject, but it's just like, as long as you're just like, okay, that was great. Next topic. People move on. They'll with you. They're with you. They'll track with you, you know? Yeah. 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 There was, there was something else that happened on the side that kind of like shot my confidence a little bit, but it was like I was I didn't like, even notice really, 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 really uh really stressed out, you know, because I yeah. kind of really wanted to make sure that people knew how to use the tracking system that we decided to use. And yeah. that people knew how to use the uh the um what do you call it? The uh the course maps and stuff like that, get yeah. all of that uploaded to the phone. But everybody pretty much figured it out by the end of the night. Yeah. Which I was very happy that that happened and stuff like that, because I didn't want these things to have to be talked about or discussed in the RV and the follow car and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I didn't want anybody confidence shot because we needed yeah. everybody's confidence to be at a 10. Because, I mean, the start of this race was fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna First say of all, four o'clock in the morning. 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. We just on Santa Monica, 
Boulevard or whatever it is, like blocking up the traffic. We got RVs yeah. plopped, entrance to the pier, like four, four or five blocks and down, yeah, separate di- directions and stuff like that. You mm-hmm. know, like we all taking pictures. It was like it was it. It was hilarious. It was, it was like celebrity. It, well, yeah, because it's like okay, so everybody's in front of the Santa Monica Pier sign, and it like it lights up at night, so like that's a vibe. And then like there's a barricade for the entrance to the pier because it's like closed, obviously, at night. And then, um, but yeah, like everybody's like, <laughs> it's just so funny because how many teams participated? I, I I kept hearing different numbers. I heard 60, 70, 80, 65. Like, yeah, like yeah. it was somewhere in that 60 to 70 <laughs> okay. range. But it was like about 400 some runners, though. Yeah. So that's a lot of fucking runners. Okay. And I mean, for context, yeah, I mean, that's that is a lot. And I think for an unsanctioned race, which they keep it private, they like basically only invite different crews out like it's you can't apply to this like it's you know very exclusive there's lots of barriers to entry um and that's fine that's the appealed for it but it's like you everyone's showing up and everyone wants a picture in front of this like uh the sign and like and so like one crew's up comes up and then they say their slogan there's photos and videos and then another yep. and then another crew's like okay let's like elbow ourselves in and they're like they're trying to take a photo it was just crazy. And then you see like the videographers coming out with their freaking shit, body rigs and shit. And it's yeah, just like, oh yeah, my yeah. God. It was a production. Everybody it had was their production. own production, however small or large. Like it was like, it was a thing. And it's, I mean, this is what the 10th year that they've done it. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, yeah. it just, it was a, a moment. And then you have, and then it's like the runners can either, from the from the start line, the OG route has you going to the left. And then you have, but then because it's an unsanctioned race, you can go and do whatever the fuck you want. You can take shortcuts. You could do the choice yeah. is yours. Your team can be as big yeah. or as small or whatever. The original was a six person team and they and they did yeah. the OG route. So then it's like yeah. some people, instead of taking a left, were going straight. So I was at the intersection trying to capture how the runners came out because I was like I didn't feel like I yeah. needed to be right at the front and yeah. people were pushing people are like yeah some people are gonna go straight so get out of the way blah, blah, blah. and so it's like and then the runners burst out and everyone's elbowing and shit like that and Simeon's I like mean, they burst out of the crowd because uh, the starting line the was start, crowded niggas was encompassing the runners the runners couldn't yeah. even get out they had to push through yeah. the crowd to, to yeah. start the race but also like everyone was like doing the fucking most because it's like this is the start yeah. of a 340 mile run like i think if you get a little held up in the very beginning you'll be okay like yeah, yeah i think yeah. you'll be all right yeah. there's a lot of other equalizers yeah. throughout the race um yeah so i just thought that that was really crazy and then i was the first driver and I didn't get no damn sleep. I went to bed at one o'clock wait, in the morning. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Wait, yeah, wait, you wait, tell wait. me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Wait. The runners take off, right? Yeah. You, like, it's a very pivotal moment in the beginning, right? The runners take off, right? And everybody, like, just cheering and videotaping the runners. But then all of a sudden, everybody else just started take. I don't know who started it, but everybody else everybody. started taking it off. And then it, it was- clicks. It's like we gotta we get to gotta our cars and we gotta to go. Our vehicles, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we could go. So oh, now and that's it's, yeah. It's it's the first fifty something runners that took off already. Yeah, but now it's everybody else. Running Everyone's down going the street. Yeah, like full speed ahead. Like I was running so fast that in two blocks, out like a block and a half, I was so winded and I was nervous. I was like, oh my god, did I taper too much? Did I lose my fitness? It was parked like four blocks away. No, it was LA so far. So fucking far. I was like, well, and that was my thought too, is that that's why I wasn't right, right in the, at the front starting line. I was like, let me get close to the sidewalk. Cause like I knew because I'm the first driver, I'm like, I have to beat Simeon to his, you know, the end of his segment. And that motherfucker mm-hmm. runs like a 630 pace. Like, you know what yes. I mean? So it was a lot of times it was like, let me make sure I can, you know, it, and obviously, you know, and I was concerned about getting stuck in traffic because all of the other 
like RVs and follow cars and da da da. And so I'm like, I got it. I'm like, I'm going to get this video and then I'm going to sprint to the car. And then I was like, but then I'm going to go to the bathroom and then I'm going to get in the car and then we're going to go, you know? <laughs> and I swear, man, it was so crazy. And everybody was just booking it. And then, but then mm. luckily I'm glad, honestly, that some people went straight and some people went to the left because the RVs that were parked down the way probably also went straight. And so yeah. traffic wasn't an issue because like, the way I was concerned about traffic because of like the race being the traffic, because for HTC, it's yeah, a, it's I a, heard. it's a thousand, it's a thousand, it's, it's a thousand teams, I think. So you have like up to 2000, I think up to 2000 vehicles on the road. Cause mm -hmm. because they have rules, you have to have like this and that and the, you know what I mean? So it's like, it, the race is twice as big. And so in my mind, I was thinking that, but now that I realize TSP is, is quite, is like about half the size, it makes sense. And you're also going further. So you spread out more, but like, yeah. Simeon's also insane. I have to say insane in the best way. That motherfucker loves yeah. to run. And if you meet him, he is like the softest, kindest, so, you know, he speaks softly. Yeah, yeah. He's, you can, you can, you can, you can check him out on our episode, So True Sounds of Simeon. Yeah, like he's got, like you know, he episode. comes in very suave. He's very smooth. Yeah. He's very, you know what I mean? He's like butter. But, but like, not when he runs. But when he runs, he's a different person. He's a completely different. Yes. It's an alter ego. We need a new name for him. He he wants to beat you. He wants you in, you want, he wants you in his dust. Okay. He wants to bury yes. you. He doesn't want to yes. see you anywhere near him when he's running. If yes. he feels like your competition, yes. he will crush you. And so he started it and ended the race and we'll get to the end eventually. But that nigga is wild when it comes to running. Yes. He lives for this. Yes. Yes. It, it, great. I wish I could have seen um, team one get through the city. Um, because So I was driving an RV because yeah. I would have loved to capture how you were navigating because you were, you were still in the crowd, I'm assuming. Right. Um, because even though people split up and stuff like that, like you're in the follow car. So you're with team one, you're chasing down Simeon. So the next person in a car can be at that 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 miniature exchange point. Right? Yeah. The next segment. So like, yeah. Right. The next segment and stuff like that. So Simeon is running like what, that. like a 10K to the next exchange point and yeah. then so on and so forth in the car until we get out of. LA. And so. but there and this time too, be in the beginning, like no other time I feel like in the race, there's so many runners on the road yeah. that you and so it's also in about the same like same place. Yeah. So then it was also like, okay, we need to find our runner. Like, cause yeah. It, there were so many. And then yeah, there were yeah. so many cars, and then there were so many like crews that were like right behind their runner. And they were getting flamed in the chats. Okay. Yeah. They were getting yes, flamed. Yes. Which, which fucking click. The click of a deal. Oh, group yeah. were getting yeah. on everyone's nerves. Yeah. Because first of all, they had like yeah. two teams, two teams, which yeah. means they had like two RVs and two, two, three, four follow cars. I was like, these motherfuckers need to go home because they're getting See, on my nerves. First and everyone else's the nerves. Race, they was getting flamed in the chat. <laughs> yes. They were going yes. like five miles an hour behind their runner every time. It's like, yes, you should be following your runner, but at some point you need to meet them. Let them run a couple of miles oh, yeah. by themselves. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where they was from, but they was just like not, it was just not clicking with them. For some reason. Like, oh, we're it. right it here. Not. And on a two-way highway, so, and no one can pass. Were they doing that? So I know I remember them doing that on on what you were talking about the two lane highway when my team was running. Was they doing that like from the very beginning? Because that's yeah. like really in the inner city. That's but crazy. The, but at least there were several lanes. Like I think like I yeah. I didn't notice it as much. There was a couple times where it's like in the beginning I was passing people and getting into like oncoming the not there was no traffic. It was four o'clock in the morning, but I was like on the other side of the road, like getting around other mm. like RVs and fucking yeah, yeah. vans and jeeps jeep wranglers and shit that were you know like because they were quite literally and i'm like it's the beginning of the race everyone has fresh legs every i'll mm -hmm. see you in five miles it's okay 
Like, right. you know what I mean? Right. Like at the end of the day, I'm trying to see where fine. this this minor exchange is so that I can make sure that the other runners in the car are ready to go because they might need a second to get out and adjust themselves because we've been chopping it up at the start line. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers don't even know if they have everything they need right now. Like, you right. know, so like right. give them a second Thanks. to get out of the car and get ready. And so then there was that. And it, it, I think there out. was like a learning curve of like determining where you stop to allow the other. Because in, in LA has all these like the streets were funny. And so then it was definitely interesting in the beginning. And then right. once your team hopped in the car, because I did the first two legs with Denise and Denise was driving for your team. You remember right. this? I don't yeah, yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're looking at yeah. me like, I don't I, fucking know. No, I had to, <laughs> I had to remember it in my head because so I was in an RV at from the beginning of the race driving an RV to get yeah. it out. It's because when nobody driving an RV with yeah. all of this craziness going around yeah. and stuff, because I didn't want nothing to happen. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm driving an RV until, until I got to run. So we... We just shot to the next ex- next the team first exchange, exchange, point, which, team exchange. Yeah. So we'll what we'll, we'll do for our listeners is the follow car exchanges. We'll keep referring to them as the minor exchanges, and then when the teams had to exchange from the RV into the follow car, we'll call that the major exchanges. Okay. Yeah. Because there's so many exchanges. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but so I get the RV to the major exchange and stuff like that. We get there, we like circle on the block because somebody in the car got a got a poop. So we looked at bathrooms and stuff like Damn. that. We ended up just saying, fuck that. We couldn't find one and just parking. So people are like kind of resting, sleeping, waiting for y'all in the follow car to get to where we at. Right. I'm so turned around and I'm thinking that the runner was gonna come from a completely different direction. <laughs> Jeremy is coming. I don't even know if this is the. I don't know where the fuck Jeremy was coming from, but yeah. y'all just pull up. <laughs> I, I, we out. We 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 just slap. We didn't chill. We've been there for like at least two hours waiting on yeah. y'all to come yeah. to, come catch us because everybody in your car had like a ten k once or twice. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, one right? time, everyone was doing just one their time. one little segment. Yeah. So, so y'all had four runners doing 10Ks each. So we were yeah. at this point for like a few hours. So we chilling. Mm-hmm. I, it's freezing. It yeah. is so cold. I went outside to stretch yeah. and I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to stay <laughs> in the RV until it's time to go. And so by the time your team pull up in a Buick, we all like ready. We, we hopping out, like team one is coming out of the car. My team, team two is ready to get in the car. Angela, D. Swain, Savory Sist, you know what I'm saying? The Savory Sister ready to go, right? And this was for her flat running. I mean, she took off at, at from the exchange with Jeremy. And I mean, she was cruising I don't even know what street they was running down, but it had like a little trail and she was cruel. She made that shit look so effortless. Yeah, she was. was Yeah, she really did like. No, because she exchanged after Aaron. Mm -mm. No, she was. Jeremy gave it to her and then she gave it to me and then I gave it to Aaron. Oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, that was. Yeah, I mean, it was very. That first couple segments for me, I was just like, what the fuck? Like, I was just trying to like pay attention as much as possible. And like, I also had to go to the bathroom. I scared a um, a gas station tenant. The guy literally thought I was like, I don't know. There's a lot of homeless people in LA and he must have thought I was homeless, but I was fully dressed in a nice outfit. Like, you know what I mean? I pulled up in a Buick <laughs> with a whole bunch of runners and this motherfucker was just like, no. <sighs> and like, you know what I mean? I was just like, Jesus Christ, I need to pee. Like, well, you had so you probably had so much frantic energy. G. I was like, can I please go to the bathroom? He's like, no, he thought I was gonna rob him. Um, so yeah, it was it was I was like, I feel offended. I was like, bro, what? Um uh, I feel offended. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I mean, getting out of LA was the, is the point. And we had two major exchanges before fully getting out of LA. So it was like team one went, team two went. And by the time team three was going, I rested and drove the RV to the next major exchange. And I was able to rest. Cause that was the whole thing is that like, as the driver, cause it was me, Nez and Denise, and sometimes you, but like primarily us, me, Nez and Denise, it's like whoever was driving the RV, the the great part of that was like, you might drive for 30 minutes to the next exchange, major exchange for the team 
uh, exchanging, mm-hmm. but then you have like a couple hours of waiting mm-hmm. for those runners to catch up to you. So then, yeah, you can sleep, you can rest, whatever. Um, <laughs> and I don't know when we're going to talk about this, but like at the end, I realized that everybody was pooping outside. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I ain't like take one shit outside. I was everybody, every, every time. Well, that's the thing is that you, we, th- there's like, <laughs> I think, sure, there's probably teams where that was normal, but I'll just say that like by the end of the trip, everyone is pooping outside and not just our team, oh. but like other teams. And I even heard from oh, an, other God. teams that have run in the past, they said their number one rule was no poops in the RV. So everybody was pooping in the desert. That is hilarious. Yo. So I I'm refuse. Just, but I, I, I refuse. I'm just, I was like, whoa, this is a crazy experience because it's like running, a lot of running has like, it revolves around pooping. And, you know, you show up to a race and, and everybody's at, at the motherfucking porta potties. Okay. And, and I was like, and when it comes to being on RV and everybody's on there, everybody's got to go to the bathroom, everybody's running because running is a diuretic, right? It makes you go. Mm-hmm. It was just crazy. Cause I was like, wow, like it, everybody had to go to the bathroom at all times. And it was interesting to see how everybody dealt with it. And I didn't realize you didn't notice this, but that that's what happened. Nah, I did not know. I did not realize. <laughs> I listened. I was constipated for the first three days of this trip. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> like the end of the race, but I like my shit loosened up. And, but I was in that bathroom just trying to make it happen. Uh, but yeah, no, nah, I was, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I think I might have peed outside, but I was, I refused. I, I mean, everybody was peeing outside, but I think. Yeah. Well, shout out to y'all, man. I'm, I know. <laughs> but you was in the car a lot. You was in the follow car a lot. I was in the car. I mean, I did, I feel like I did my job. And then when it was time for me to rest, I think as a, as a crew member, what I, cause like part of this experience for me was to understand what it felt like to be a crew member. Cause I know what it feels like to be a leader, but I have never experienced just simply being a driver and supporting a crew before. And like, I just found that fascinating and like really wanted to experience it. And so being in that position, I was like, one thing that I learned was when it is time to rest, don't resist it. Don't Please don't, don't, don't resist it. it. Even if you're pumped up and ready to go, when people are asking you to rest, it's because we want you to save that energy to then deposit it later on in the race when we are going to need it. Because if everybody crashes at the same time, as far as drivers go, crew members go, that's not good for anybody because they, we yeah. are the ones that need to have, we need to keep everything going so that the runners don't need to worry about it. Yeah, yeah. I turn, I, I turn my little leadership brain off. Whatever y'all wanted to do, that's what we was doing. The only thing I was right. concerned about was... <laughs> running like that's right. it like i'm gonna shut yeah. the fuck up y'all can you talk can about this. <laughs> right it's like you can lead up but it's like unless you're i really believe like yeah when you're crewing you're crewing and it's like again it's like and so for me when i knew it was my time to rest even if i had energy and felt like i could keep going i went up right above the driver area where that the driver flat bed was out yeah. for hours and then i eventually out here you talking about well, well what is courtney doing <laughs> I, every time you said my name, <laughs> that was my alarm clock. Cause it, both times, cause the first time actually I slept in the back and I heard you talking about me and it literally woke me up. I don't know what it is about your voice. And then the second time, you know what I mean? Cause that was like, the first time it was when we were just out of LA and it was finally my time to just mm-hmm. like go rest. And then it mm-hmm. was, whoa, what, what time was that? Cause that was during Friday day, but in the middle of the night on Saturday, no, on Friday, on the middle of the night of Friday, that was when I like, I feel like I took like a three hour, four hour rest. Mm-hmm. Like I yeah, skipped yeah. over two teams and was like sleeping. Yeah. And then yeah, I heard your yeah, voice be like, some, 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 some. And then I poke my head out and you're like, well, there, there's our answer. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, all right, let's go. Oh, yeah, lost your ass. I hadn't seen, <laughs> I hadn't seen or heard from you in hours. I was like, yeah, where Courtney at? Like, da, 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 da. I have no idea. I thought you was in a bed and you wasn't. I have forgot all about that. Yeah, I thought you was, but uh, you was the one who realized that there was a curtain. So you oh. <laughs> I had no idea there was a curtain. Oh. A curtain yeah. and plenty of space. And I had my no. pillow from my house. It was you great. had the you found the curtain and you found the little the little 
panel thing that you put up so you wouldn't slide off? Because when I went up there and slept, I didn't know that that was there. So when y'all was driving, and my body was just shifting. So I'm laying there asleep and you, my, my, my little hands were just going, <laughs> trying to spider me in the ground so I didn't slide off the top of that wall. I was like... I was people's laying up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was mad cozy. Cause then especially when you're up there versus Karen the loved bed that in spot the back. up there too. Y'all oh, yeah. slept together a lot. <laughs> Man, we was cuddle buddies for real. Like we was like, you know, we had our whole situation. Her head was down there, my head was up there. We was chilling. Like I was like, this is fucking great. If those boots worked, I would have put them on too. The recovery oh boots. I, I like I so <laughs> bad that I left the fucking charger. Cause we was we were supposed to stop at the store on the way to Denise's house. I was going to grab yeah. the seven on Sunday's flag, check the incubator for uh, the rest of our gear and stuff like that, and then grab the grab the plug for the boots. Did not happen because we did not have a car. I was so hurt. Damn. So hurt. But, um, yo, us getting out of L.A. was crazy. Like, Narvi. that heel... Yeah, no, like oh, you running running up that freaking hill to get out of L- that was the one, and that's that's when people was really roasting click because that was where that one lane highway was, and we just following a runner and stuff like that. But it was crazy, it was just I mean, like straight up. I was running straight up, and then I get to the top, and it was a mile and a half of downhill, yeah. When I tell you I was running a 730 for about a mile and a half, like I was, I just, I just heard coach driving. Chest forward, pelvis forward, right. and I just fell into E. I, I didn't, I didn't like stretch my legs out. Yeah. I just picked up my cadence, yeah. you know, overturning my feet and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I just let gravity do everything yeah. else. Like I put zero effort into that, into that pace. And I was Hell just yeah. falling down as you know, yeah. if I would have missed that, or like if my ankles would have clicked or something, because they do when I run, yeah. I would have wiped out and yeah. I would have been gone the rest of the trip. Oh yeah. <laughs> A downhill will take you out if you'd run it the wrong way. That shit like was like easily. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It but was then crazy, the, but I Well, I just want to say, because you went, and then Aaron switched out with you, and then Aaron brought us to the deli where we got those free Mortons. And I just want to just note, like, these little TSP stops that we came across, because they were really absurd. And, like, mm-hmm. I was... All the time, I was just like, what the fuck? Because, like, the Morton guy that we saw at the headquarters in L.A., he was like giving out tons of Morton to everybody, which was like, that was really dope. But then that motherfucker yeah. was at the deli and it was like, he was like- At a quickie mart. <laughs> at a quickie mart that had, you know, and I guess it's a staple, right? And they make really good sandwiches, which they were fire. But he was like, had his own table and he's like, yeah, Morton's support the local business. You want some Morton? He had right like next a to fucking- the liquor. Right, had a fucking Vitamix and was mixing Morton. I'm like, first of all, that's how you make your morning. And then second of all, like, what the fuck? Are, what? Nigga, where'd you come from? Like, you know what I mean? Like the whole yes. time. And I know they had like a TSB crew and they were doing like check-ins and stuff like that. But this motherfucker looked, he was like a jack in the box. He just like yes. popped out Pop and was out. like, you want some Martin? Like it was just. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they then had I the sandwiches. Yeah. And stuff. We got, we had like a crate of sandwiches. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah. Cause they sponsored like what all the, sa- like a certain amount of sandwiches. And then I come out and. Angela's like, you you see that uh, Italian crew hit them cars <laughs> with the RV. <laughs> Wait, you missed that too? You missed that? No, because that, that's what Angela exchanged okay. with me. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, so I had took off and ran. Man, oh my God. So I come out because like Denise is driving at this point and I'm just trying to like... I, trying to help her navigate through some shit because these RVs pulled into this quickie mart. Okay, you gotta wait. Um, this quickie mart, like, draw, like a... um, Because when we say quickie mart, it's not like a quick trip or like a gas station. It it's, was, like a, it's like a corner stuff. store. Yeah, it's like a corner yeah. liquor store, but you know, bodega type. And like, the fucking parking lot was not that big. 
But then somehow there was like four, five RVs in that bitch. And I'm like, how the yeah. fuck are we getting out of here? And why are you guys in here? Like, there's plenty of street parking. Like, y'all should have just been on the street. But then they decided to go in the parking lot. And, and Angela, I guess, watched the Italian team try to nuzzle their way through in their RV past these motherfuckers Damn. and hit two cars with their RV. Damn. Were they anywhere to be seen? <laughs> no. So they them motherfuckers off. drove off. They were like... <laughs> Ah, that's hilarious. Mind you, oh I was my like, God, no, I missed that. Yeah, I was texting um Mike and Picasso because I because you know, because they were just like, How's it going? And I was just like, Well, and I gave them the update, and he's just like, and he's uh, Picasso's like, I just see animaniacs in my head, like you know, the cartoon where everybody's just like <laughs> frantic and shit and i'm just like yeah that's exactly what it is we're a whole bunch of like it's like a cartoonish situation where everybody's like where's my runner oh my god the rv and the rv's fucking gigantic and it's wobbling everywhere and like no one knows what the fuck's going on but they're but they do at the same time we all like everybody seeing each other for the first time yo what's good yo i gotta get ready to run my runner coming i gotta get ready to exchange this shit like i'm like coming out the quickie mart with like bags with like 14 sandwiches in it y'all like answers a half a mile away which means like she two minutes away and stuff like that and like i'm like i'm like in the parking lot looking like a lost child because i don't know where y'all to move the car (laughs) (laughs) it was it was it was crazy. It was crazy. But finally, we like you said, I took off. I do my climb. I do my descent. I pass it off to Aaron. Aaron runs. And I want to say, like, that was the end of L.A. when we yeah. pass it off to Team 3. Yep. And Gay started off Team 3. And, I mean, just we were flying from that point on and stuff like that. And then I don't even know how, when, where, who. But next thing I know, we were just out in the country, just yep. out in the desert. And yeah. stuff like that. And yeah. it was team three. Karen, Gay, Austin, Simeon. Uh, and Devin yeah. was Devin. wild. No, Simeon was yeah. part of team. Simeon one. just popped in in the in at the end. Yeah, Simeon, yeah. Simeon was plotting at the end and shit yeah. like that. He but definitely was. It was their team. And it's nothing to take away from Team 1 and stuff like that. Because Team 1 got us started. Team 1 has a bunch of fast runners and stuff like that. But, I mean, just watching Team 3 just, like, sub-seven-minute yeah. paces. Fucking booking and it. Stuff like that. Just going. Yeah. And they... So, originally, once we got out of L.A., all of the teams was having, like, two or three cycles of 5Ks. Yeah. But Team... Team three started doing just two cycles of four and a half miles. Yeah. And so eventually all of us adopted that because it mm-hmm. just, I could not imagine getting out of that car to run for a third time at no part of the race <laughs> and stuff like that. And no part of that third time getting out, of, I would two four and a half mile runs and stuff mm-hmm. like that felt better than doing three 5Ks and stuff like that. Right. So we eventually adopted that. But I mean, they was eating those four and a half miles up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like sub seven minute miles. Yeah. And Karen was I mean, just it's like 30 minutes. Going. Yeah. Yeah. Karen, Karen's like, a beast. Like Karen knows. She works. I mean, the, mm-hmm. the work she does with Windrunners is no fucking joke. And so she was just mm-hmm. right there with them. It was, it was, I, I, I wish I could have gotten a car. Like what was your experience with uh, running with team one, uh, crew and team one and crew and team, team three. Well, okay. Yeah. I mean, Simeon being a part of team one, like he definitely like, cause it, it was a uh, Heather, Simeon, Gerald, Rosalie, uh, Rosalie and uh, Jeremy, yeah. right. They're fast. Yeah. Rosalie be getting it. Yes. Heather was getting it. And I'll say this team one, when we were getting, starting off and, bruh the hills so because like it was a climb it was a climb from the very beginning because yeah. fucking heather had a big ass hill i mean simeon he had it pretty flat but then as soon as heather popped out she was <laughs> she crepes. said she Jen. said the voice note <laughs> bruh, she said what was she what did she say she said fuck these hills yeah she's like why does la have so many fucking hills and she's like and it was a climb and the thing is is i remember actually running it down for the la marathon and it is like deep like honestly i would love for y'all to come out and run la and just like i need someone else to just bounce my thoughts on as far as like (laughs) 
how this fucking marathon is because that marathon was fucking hard. And the wow. it was it was just a lot of that the whole time. And but yeah, Heather was climbing, 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 fucking uh Rosalie also climbing, right? And then it just and then and so like they killed it. Like and also Jeremy, like he was getting it too. Like I think we did, I mean, and like Simeon is such a big cheerleader and he's always oh, yeah. like so supportive and like everyone is, but then there's always the people who are a little bit more loud and he's always that person. So like team one was a lot of fun to be around. Um, as I mean, all of them are fun, but for different reasons. <clears throat> and then team three, like y'all, well, first of all, team two, shout out to y'all, right? Aaron, Ian, who else was in the car? Angela. Uh, Angela. Okay. Angela. Right. Y'all were hilarious. Like y'all, cause also you're so small. You're yeah. such, a, and so it was just like, I think I drove you guys a couple of times, but it was just like, it was also very fun with you guys. Karen, and then I, Karen was yeah. hilarious. Cause she was talking yeah. about how like, yeah, she like, our, our, our team was like such a vibe. We would like play music and we'd be dancing oh, and doing yeah. all of that. Yeah. Da, da, da. Like they yeah. was bragging about the vibe of their team the entire trip. Like it's yeah. a vibe. But you know, <laughs> as you like, like, <laughs> <laughs> when it came down to me telling them about my team, like, what'd y'all do? I was like, we just roasted each other. The <laughs> we just talk shit. Yeah. Angela would go into her like five minute monologues. <laughs> and we just like talk shit the entire time. There was barely any music being played. It was just like really, really great conversation where we were just like being hella sarcastic and roasting each other. <laughs> yeah. Time. Yeah. Y'all were funny. Um, and <laughs> um and i'll say yeah i didn't actually drive i didn't drive uh i didn't crew uh team three until the end really uh-huh so oh wow and it was wasn't until one. yeah and i it was like i crewed them like right before we got to the uh, nevada state line mm-hmm. and then i crewed them right at like when we were getting to the the finish mm-hmm. and those two moments, those two segments were like crucial and it was hilarious. Mm-hmm. And when we were in Nevada, when we were still in uh, California approaching Nevada, mm-hmm. that was when I was like, oh, okay. They're like, yeah, well, you know, we just like, we just like play music. And then they just like opened up all the, the doors and like Devin is playing his playlist and, and they're like, yeah, we're just going to like turn it up a little bit. And then it was like blasting music. And meanwhile, these motherfuckers also left out the fact that they coordinate. I swear to God, they coordinated every time they ran. And cause like literally matching. I bet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Fucking yeah, yeah. matching. So then when I first got in the car with them, they had on their all, everybody had on their bright pink outfits. Mm-hmm. And so then I saw uh fucking um uh oh my god what is his name uh not that's not devin it's um koros he works for koros mm-hmm. after, um donovan he this guy yeah. donovan who works for koros uh really dope black guy he lives um like out just outside of orange county like um you know whatever mm-hmm. and he like we've been having conversation i've seen him around he's he ran the chicago marathon i'm pretty sure last year he was at the la marathon and then he was here too and i was like oh my god down of it and so but it also meant he was competition because at that time his his little his little follow his crew and his follow vehicle were the only ones out there with us and i was there with team three and these motherfuckers wanted to fucking put them in their dust and so the whole time and then austin's ass and respect it on him and he's probably never ever gonna listen to this but the thing is is austin goes out right and austin's he's gotta climb because we're in death valley at this point and yeah. these motherfucking hills were crazy. There was times, and the thing is, is when you're dry, it's crazy when sometimes you're on a very steep hill. It doesn't even seem like you're on a steep hill. Yeah. But then you look yeah, behind was, you. Yeah. And you see yeah. where you came from. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. So Austin was like one of the first of the group to get, because he was the first out. He was the first to hit the hill. Donovan's on that hill. Mm-hmm. And we're doing four and a half mile repeats. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was like two each and halfway through we get to the end and I'm like, wait, that's not Donovan anymore. 
that that team has had switched out their runner. Austin comes back. Mm-hmm. He goes, he couldn't take it, bro. He couldn't take it, bro. He could, <laughs> he's not eating these hills like me, man. He said, he said, my legs <laughs> couldn't take it. Um, I can't take it. He's like, nah, bruh, fuck that, bruh. No, and he was just like talking all this shit. And so then I'm like, okay, 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 okay. So then we switch out. It's like Karen or Devin or something like that. And we're running, running, running. And then I'm like, wait a minute now. Cause I'm watching the way, cause I'm like, at this point I'm stopping the car and then also getting out and kind of observing like what the other team is doing. Cause I like, they want to beat them. So I'm thinking like, okay, what's the strategy going on here? They were like switching out their runners and like new runners were coming out of the fucking woodwork and they had an RV that was very close. And I was like, okay, so what the fuck is going on here? And then I was like, y'all they're switching out their runners like really fast. I was like, what do you think about cutting these 4.5 mile repeats into 2.25 repeats. And they're like, okay, okay. And so then we switched the game up, okay? And then, and from that point on, they had fresher legs, they were going faster and Mm -hmm. we were able to like get gain on them, beat them and then like get way ahead of them. And it was like this whole thing. And then we were a vibe because every time the other, their follow car would come up, these motherfuckers in their pink outfits with the loud music, da, da, da. And then like, so I saw Donovan at the pool party. He's like, you guys are such a vibe. You guys, you guys see you guys is like the best thing ever and i was like yeah i know it's great but we also like we also like put you in our desk but it's okay uh so <laughs> just out here ghost racing yeah you know i mean ghost racing like real bad so and that was the start of it that's when i started to notice like how team three really was because i was like okay y'all are y'all are different because um Y'all want to, y'all just want to ghost race everybody. And it was just, it was hilarious. Austin was cracking me up and fucking Gabe. Oh yeah. Gabe, yo, there was, it was like, and then Devin, cause the thing is they, we got to a point where there was another really high incline that twist and turn. Remember when you took the, when, uh, I think. Denise says she was driving the RV at this time, but the, you go up this big hill in, in Death Valley and then you go, get to the top and then it curves straight down and it's like winding. Yeah, I was Remember knocked that? out in the RV. I oh, missed okay. all of that. I was dead asleep. Okay, because that was... That was a fucking moment and the scenery was unbelievable. It was breathtaking. Amazing. But man. this team, it, I think they're called the... Uh, and y'all can come for me, but this was just, this, this is me in my competitive state. This is not my, my, this is my biased situation in this point, because this is me being a seven on Sundays crew member. Okay. This is not me okay. just being a podcast host because what, and it was, uh, I think it was, a uh, um, fucking, uh, social hour run club. That's who, who mm-hmm. you're behind. So if y'all know them, let them mm-hmm. hear this. They were switching out the runners, right? One after the run. Like, I was like, okay, so y'all just gonna, I don't, it seemed like they had a team of like 20 people. Cause I, next thing I knew, I saw two follow cars, two RVs. I said, nigga, where are these people coming from with these big ass teams? <laughs> they call back up. Bruh, I was like, y'all are too big for this. And you keep, and you have all these fresh legs. But then the mistake was, is we hit that steep incline. They switched it out for this, this, uh, one of their, female runners who was not nearly as like she you know she was doing her thing but they switched her out halfway through the incline and it was even worse and it was just like come on man like y'all should they probably should have thought about that a little bit more because Devin came out it was Devin's turn and he was like I got this I was like sprinted up the hill and then I we were already down but I knew for a fact he was like he by the time I saw him at the end he was like you guys that was fucking great I got to the top and I was just winding down and I was just like flying to the he's like oh and the girl she, she back there like it was great it was a fucking fantastic time like it was great when you can when you can mark your kills like that because that's what we did I mean that's part of the run that's part of the race and for me mm-hmm. that's exciting I feel like you know that's what we did for HTC. Everybody had a yeah. marker and you saw little tallies on everybody's RVs and those tallies That's marked fire. their kills. And that was just across That's the board. Everybody fire. did that shit. That's fire. It's part That's of the race. Fire. That's fire. Yeah, yeah. I killed nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I killed a nobody. I got, I got killed a couple of times. <laughs> I killed a few times. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? All pleasantly. Hey, yeah. great job, buddy. 
thank you, sir. Bruh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was fun. I, it was some of the best running I feel like I've ever done. Mm-hmm. Um, I could have done and stuff like that. Like there was moments I was going uphill and I like Strava never shows me my gap pace because I'm in Chicago and I'm usually running on flat land. Yeah. I was running up these hills doing uh-huh. like 9, 30, 10 minute miles and stuff like that. And it was like your average gap pace was a 8.33. So like I'm giving 8.33 effort and stuff like that. Oh, that's what gap effort. is? Yeah. So gap would be your adjusted pace if this was flat land based on Damn. Your Damn. Yeah. So like I'm giving 8 minute, 8.30 energy, you know what I'm saying? But I'm running somewhere between a 9.15 and a 10 minute mile and stuff like that. <laughs> And so we in Death Valley and I get to a point where I'm just like, my legs are tired. My legs are done and I cannot drop under 10 minutes. I'm like just trying and trying and trying. And so finally I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to walk for 45 seconds. So I walk. Let me just get my heart rate down and stuff like that. I'm just walking. And then I'm like, I'm going to break the rest of this four and a half miles up into just one minute repeat. So I run Mm -hmm. for a minute, walk for 30 one for a minute and it was so perfect for me because it gave me time to like refresh my legs and then yeah. I would take off and I'm running yeah. like an 8 15 8 30 yeah. and I chill and I walk so we would it would average out to like somewhere like around a 9 30 somewhere yeah, around yeah. there and stuff like that depending on how slow I was walking yeah. and stuff like that so that was the only way I was able to cut my 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 mouth pace down because if Hell I was yeah. just running that shit I could not get my legs to turn over, but stopping and walking. And I was kept going. There was one point where, uh, because the entire time, the RV never really saw the runners until we got to Death Valley because the RV would always go a different route to get to the major exchange. Yeah. And so I'm doing this, right? I'm talking shit when Jeremy passes off to me and I go take off down the road into it. And then I, I run, I'm like cleaning a mile and a half and I'm feeling good. Yeah. And stuff, but then I decide to start walking. Don't the RV come passing my? I'm like, what the? What? Where was y'all 30 seconds ago? Nigga? I felt so bad. I'm like, oh my god, they finna be in there like this nigga didn't gave up. I was like, I'm so sorry, y'all. I was like, I was texting in the chat like, hey, I'm sorry, y'all. This was my strategy. Right? It's a strategy. It's a strategy. I swear it's working. I swear to God, I was running. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was, it was crazy. It was, it was super dope, especially running at night. Running at night was the freakiest shit ever. Yeah. It was so noisy. It was like <laughs> animals coming out of nowhere, like making noises. I didn't see one. There's a lot of dogs in the properties and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it was like also like you couldn't see where you stepped. It was like everything was uneven. I think I rolled my ankle like two, three times. Yeah. I slapped myself with the, uh, with the lamp. And stuff oh, no. like that. Cause like I guess I didn't have it on properly. So I go to start running and I'm trying trying to get the map on. Next thing I know, the lamp just goes bam, just hit me in the <laughs> nose, like hard as fuck. And you I'm wore like, it the I'm wrong like, way. Days. But like I don't want to stop running and stuff. I'm oh like, my god. Oh, my god. oh, I did kill people at night. I bet I take that back. Okay. I killed two, I killed okay. I killed two people at once and I killed a third person. And stuff yeah. like that. So I did. I did get three. That kids. shit will slow people down because they're being cautious. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't slow down. I just crossed the street. Yep. I crossed the highway because I was like, "Why are they looking like they having a better time than I am?" Because I was like on. I was like running on the side of the oncoming traffic. Yeah. Which was scary as hell because the people who was going the opposite direction of us was not part of TSP. So they oh was flying up the highway doing at least a hundred miles an hour at night. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And. I, I mean, in like 97 Toyotas, like yeah. there was no new car. So the bumpers could have <laughs> flew off them joints at any given time. Like <laughs> it was, so I crossed the street to all the RVs and everything and the gravel and the road was just better on that side of it. Yeah. So I was just like able to pick it up and cruise and stuff like that. But being out there in the middle of the desert at night was so freaky and scary. Yeah. Well, and I think too, it's, it's interesting. Cause like a lot of people talk about like the stray dogs. Did you see any of those? I, nah, nah, I didn't see no stray dogs. Cause everybody was saying that. But then every time I would ask like the team, I'd be like, okay. But then what I did notice is that a lot of dogs were behind fences and yeah. 
I can see how if you don't see the fence because it's like a metal fence, you might think that the yeah. dog is not it's behind not a fence. You so you see the picture. You may see the picture of the dog in the main TSP chat. No, with the chicken in his mouth. No, which that's not surprising. White dog just had a chicken in his mouth. Yeah. Well, and I think there's like, I don't know, like of all, because I I keep, I heard a lot of stories of people being scared of the dogs, like going into this. It's like the, the, like dogs chasing you, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm curious as to like, if anyone's actually been attacked by a dog or if, and, and if some of the stories have been exaggerated because, because these areas that we're running through are poor. Yeah. It's like desert ghettos. And I think a lot of people aren't familiar oh, yeah, or yeah. ready to be to one, see these one, things. One of the white runners thought I was trying to kidnap. That's what I'm saying. And I he, think he like was so he was so nervous at the gas station. He mm-hmm. was and I was just trying to ask him that they if they was if they had dumped their RV yeah. there and stuff like that. I mean, dude got so small in his jacket mm-hmm. and stuff like that. He's like, what? Huh? No? What? What? I was like, bro, I'm not going to take you. I, I'm just, I just want to know. <laughs> I'm not going to kidnap if, you. I don't want to steal anything. Right. From I'm you. not going to take you, bro. I'm not going to punch you, you in know your what face. I'm like, it's fine. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm like, I'm a little curious about that and how people are perceiving a poor area in on the West Coast. Cause like, you know, it was, it was they, 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 it was a very rural community, rural and, and we poor. Don't think about the West Coast, the West yeah. Coast having those rural communities, but it's like, like that. that's more and than I will city. Say, I, I will say though that hearing about the speed project, like when we had Kayla on, um, mm-hmm. she was talking about people fucking with the runners, pulling up on RVs and stuff like that. I, I, I don't. I didn't hear any stories about that this year and I didn't experience any of that. And I know mm-hmm. our runners experienced that, but also paying attention to the way a lot of these groups were, were not respecting the communities that they were running through mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I can see how these people in these small towns will be mad like the race. Yeah. You know what what who yeah, are like, you? Why are you running over here? What the fuck? I saw mm-hmm. They, um, I was driving the RV to the disco party stop where they had burgers and, and, and so Oakley sunglasses and shit. Yeah. And there were, there was these two guys on a four wheeler and they were just like following us. And I was like, mm-hmm. they're just, I mean, I don't even think, I don't even know if I was in the RV. I think it was in the follow car. Cause it was, um, it was Rosalie who was running and she was, she was on a straightaway running past the um um plane graveyard the airplane graveyard mm-hmm. and um there was two white runners in front of her and the four people and the and it's like literally kids like they look like teenagers and they like had their phones out and they were just taking videos and you could tell that they were just like interested in what the fuck we were doing they didn't look at all like they had any like intention of doing anything that was bad or, you know, and these two white runners in the front, they saw the four wheeler pull up and he, one of them was like, he was on the defense immediately. And it's like, yeah. these are fucking kids. Like they're not, they're just yeah. curious about you're, you're literally driving through their community, through their neighborhood. And they, and they want to know what's going on. The way that people get around out there in the rural areas of fucking, of the desert is a lot of people have four wheelers. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. fucking sand. There's a lot of mud. There's a, uh, there's there's sand everywhere. There's you know what I mean? It's easier to get around, I'm sure. So it's like people mm-hmm. are on four wheelers because that's just how they that's how they function. But it, it is very I was like I'm not going to undermine the fact that it, there are probably unsafe areas and things that that are unsafe have happened, but like it seems like a lot of stories and a lot of exaggerations and not a lot of actual like things that have happened. Is yeah. what I'm getting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because yeah. people are scared yeah. and they're white. And I'll say one last thing just on this point, because, you know, it was ultimately a really great experience. But I will say Niels, the person who, you know, the main guy who put it on, mm-hmm. he made that comment. And I'm going to say this here because I want people to actually I just want I just want to share it so people can actually hear it. 
and I'll let it be. But when he was saying how, you know, their whole thing is, you know, you know, it's an unsanctioned race. So we don't tell people who the main organizer is. And you're just, if you get pulled over by the police, you just say, I'm running. My friends and I are running from LA to Vegas. That's fine. But in that little meeting that we had at the headquarters, after he said that, he also was like, yeah, you know, sometimes police come at the start, but like, you know, again, just like, don't tell them anything, just say, you know, whatever. And he's like, you know, I had the idea of calling in a robbery down the street so that, you know, they would be busy. Um, but then, you know, my partner said that that's ridiculous. And then he said that his partner was so conservative. No, my nigga, you can literally put somebody's life in danger by calling in a fake ass robbery down the street because you feel like you want to put on your unsanctioned race. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. The fuck is wrong with you? And half the room laughed and all those motherfuckers were white. And meanwhile, you have people, our crew from Chicago, and we're looking at him like, are you insane? And it's like, yeah. your friend is not conservative. It was the fuck, cringy. It was cringy it was as cringy. shit. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. And so it's like, just to give people also just, because I want to give an honest thought on my experience. And that was part of it. That was before we even got to the start line, this motherfucker was saying that. So then I'm like, dude, you're clearly yeah. disconnected and delusional about what is going on here. And now all of a sudden you have people of color that are participating in this race and you have no idea that what you just said is com- is extremely dangerous for yeah. a lot of communities. Yeah. That's just not funny. Yeah. And so right. I think there's just, I think there's a lot of that. There's a lot of, and even in the chat at the end, this, this one white dude was talking about, this is for racists, who, who, people who can afford this race, who can afford to come out here, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, these white folks are funny. They're really funny because they create space. And then all of a sudden they don't realize that there's other people around and they don't see reality the same way that they do. And they don't have any sense of like understanding or like um, awareness of what the fuck they're saying. Cause it's like, yeah, dude. At, the, at the, the end of the race, there was a lot of people in the chat that was just like expressing a lot of just, I don't even know uh, what's the word I'm looking for for um, entitlement. It was kind of weird because like the energy of the speed project that was presented to me was like, this is just some like chill, fun, you know, like whatever. Like it, it, it does, it wasn't giving all of the bells and whistles of a traditional race, whether it's an ultra marathon or a 5k, it wasn't giving all of the bells and whistles that was up front. Like just the grunge, gritty, uh grassroots feeling of it was what it was but it was like people like in the chat like at the end just really really kind of shitting on the race and that kind of is like don't do it yeah like don't don't come back don't do it and don't share it here like everybody's being mad celebratory and enjoying what's hold on what's wrong oh okay sorry uh, oh okay <laughs> i'm sorry i guess this is it but um yeah and that that was that was that was weird as fuck that like you ran 340 miles, had to experience with your team, and then at the end just want to shit on it. Like, mm. like yeah. that was I just, mean, people were like that was not a great feeling. This metal is not what it needs to be. To yeah. Like, I mean, and that's there, yeah, there's always gonna be people who are entitled, but then it is interesting too that it's like those are also the people who were invited to be there because it's an exclusive race. Yeah. So facts. it's like why don't we look at the people, nice. like, how do they even get there? Well, people like Niels nice. put the invite yes. to those people. So I don't yeah. know, like. <laughs> yeah. 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 2000%. But let's, uh, let's talk about the most important, most exciting part, which you yeah. had the front row seat to um, that, uh, that end of the race and stuff like that. Yeah. Like that, that last, but it, y'all supposed to have six. Cause Okay. Gabe did this math at the end where team two, Mm -hmm. me, Aaron, and Angela, which, first of all, shout out to Angela. Because she came on this trip injured, barely had run and stuff like that. Um, And just really concerned about what her ability to participate in this race was. I think I was, I definitely was nervous. Everybody was really nervous and stuff like that about what she could and couldn't do and stuff like that. But I mean, from 
the first exchange that she took all the way down to powering through that last moment was fucking like an uh, uh, Oscar worthy performance, like 2000%. I didn't see like, it. I wasn't there. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you wasn't in the car with team with team two. I think Nance yeah. was in that car with us. And so Gabe had did this mad before we got out of it, before um team two got out there and it's like, hey, y'all do 15 miles, we'll do 16 miles. And we was like, all right, mm-hmm. yeah, the math cool was wrong, things. but yeah, yeah. The yeah. math was wrong. We hop in the car, right? And Simeon from team one decides he's gonna stay in the car, right? And so he in the car. He some he he somehow almost talks Aaron out of his mouth. He has like an that. agenda. At the end of the race, he had an agenda. He had an agenda, a super agenda. But it was it was cool that he was there because one, I I mean I'm the I'm probably the, I'm definitely the slowest person on the entire team and stuff like that. And uh, and and Angela was just like we was going to appeal. So Angela was just injured. Like we just didn't know what she was going to be able to do. Right. And so she takes off and no, I get in the car with team one because they weren't finished. Like Mm -hmm. the the map, like something should have told us already that the math was wrong because what we came for the exchange, for the major exchange point was, was not far enough for the last runner to finish their leg and stuff. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I hop in the car with team one and I'm going forward while I'm in there, Simeon in my head. He like, so um, I was wondering, you know, maybe we can just do mal repeats and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I mean, he working on me. He working oh, yeah. on me. It's finally, I guess, got to the point, right? I'm just like, Simeon, <laughs> I can't say yes to this without the rest of my crew. And they're not here. So yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of this car and I'm going to run like I'm running. Um, I'm going to run like I'm running three and a half, like I'm running uh, three maps. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you get in there, tell them your plan. And if it changes, please, don't get me. Uh, yeah, please, c- like, come, come get, get me. Come get me. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I take off. I'm running uphill for two miles. Next thing I know, I see the car and I get in the car. And of course, send me in and work on everybody. Of course. They basically like, yes, let's go ahead and do mm-hmm the one mile repeats and stuff like that. Angela's like, no, nah, I'm not getting out of the car that many times. I'm running uphill. She does two mile repeats. So oh, she yeah. gets out of the car. She does, I, I don't even know who I exchanged with, but I just know Simeon was lying on that highway. Yeah. Uh, Angela gets out. She does her two miles, Um, gets back in the car. I do another mile. Aaron does a mile and stuff like that. And it finally comes down to like, um, I think even Naz got out and did some mileage, but yeah. it just came down to uh, it just came down to it just came down to like me and Aaron that last two miles doing half mile repeats. Yeah, and oh my god, I was so happy that that's all we had to do was <laughs> those half miles. I mean, I'm like, I get back up to the car after doing my my second mile repeat, and I'm breathing like I'm audibly breathing like right you right, can right hear me i'm like uh, 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 uh. And i was like i'm sorry like they heard me coming before i even got they before they saw my life <laughs> <laughs> i'm like sorry y'all i i cannot do this silently anymore. right and yeah. stuff like that so me and aaron switch up the half the half the half by half and stuff like that and it's team three team three here let me team three are ready they ready i mean team three is ready and right. they hop in the car and they take off. And I'm yeah. gonna let you take the story from here because there was drama. There was so, drama. Well, the thing is, you see, I oh, you know what? I'll come back to this, but we did take a shower halfway through, and that was glorious. And <laughs> right, y'all, everybody took a shower except for me, Angela, <laughs> team and, two, uh, team two, yeah, except for team two, because y'all Nets. was out there. Yeah, yeah. And I and what don't say nothing. Oh, I, I just felt the rest of the team would say something if they wanted to. It wasn't even my idea. It was Simeon's idea because we pulled up to a truck stop to empty the poop, right? To empty the sewage situation in the RV. And Simeon, because he's ran this race so many times, he was like, he's like, is that, is that a truck stop? He's like, is that the, uh, I think it was like ties or something like that. And he's like, 
that means they have showers. Y'all want to take showers? And everybody was like, yeah, we want to take showers. The fuck? And so we go in there. I go up to the cash register and I'm like, I, first of all, I'm very inexperienced because I'm like, I've never taken a shower at a, at a at a fucking truck stop before. And I also wasn't trying to figure out the fucking poop situation. So I was like, I'm gonna figure this uh-huh. out. They charge $18 for a shower. And I was like, Damn. sign me up. Okay. And then you get a sign little ticket. Up. Yeah. I said, they get a little ticket. And then they call your name and they let you know when your shower is available. And then there's someone to go in there and clean it out in between every single person. You get your own room. It has a toilet, a walk-in shower, a sink, a nice mirror situation, plenty of hanging space. And I'm like, this is great. And they even, if you didn't, if you don't have towels, they have two towels for you and a washcloth and they have soap and fucking shampoo and conditioner in there. I was like, oh, wow. Living in a lap of luxury. Wow. You know what I mean? And then we came up with this idea because the cash tre- cashier said this. She was like, I was like, yeah, I've never done this before. Like, what is it? Like, how do I, like, do I buy this thing here? Do the, and she was like, yeah, you can buy this here. So like, if you could buy one shower and then y'all could all use it, you know, or whatever. But I guess that communication is different between the cashier and the person actually doing the shower cleaning and managing because I guess they were mad because we bought, I was like, basically Devin and Simeon were like, well, we could just buy a couple and then we could just share. And I was like, it's $18. I'm, I'm going to get me a shower so that I can just immediately get into my shower and then be done. Cause I'm a driver and I need to make sure that I'm like on, mm-hmm. I can't be the last person. Um, mm-hmm. and so I got me a shower and then Karen came in and used my shower after, and then like Devin and then they were using the same ones and they might've gone and try got the, they got some looks or whatever. There's also like laundry, like a laundry room in there too, where you could like clean your clothes, which I'm like, wow, like that's crazy. (laughs) Everyone got angry with me because I thought y'all were encroaching on the exchange point a lot sooner than I uh, thought. So then like some of the runners didn't get the long shower that they wanted. And they and like, they're like, oh, I could have been having a crispy Creek. Cause there was also Cinnabon at that stop too. So they're like, (laughs) Everyone was like, I, oh, I could have had a, a Cinnabon and well, my shower could have been longer and da, da, da. And meanwhile, we like, and then we got to the place and was like, okay, we'll be here in an hour and a half. And everyone was like, <laughs> fucking pissed. But you know what I mean? I must say as a crew member, my goal is to make sure everybody is on point where they're supposed to be and not late. So exactly. We did that. And ultimately- This was not a day spa trip. <laughs> yeah, right. They was trying to have desserts in, in a fucking steam shower. So- <laughs> um sorry uh jesus and so like so we got so anyway we got there and everything and then y'all found out we had a shower but that was like incredible so oh, for anyone yeah. planning to go there next year just when you get to the truck stop just know that that's that's there that's there that's there meanwhile we just running out there in the desert <laughs> at night sweaty scared tired <laughs> And y'all in there arguing about Grisby Green. (laughs) (laughs) They were so mad. But yeah, I digress. So we get, so by this time, I'm in, so this is the end of the race, right? To your point, Gabe, he did his math. And he's the one that's been managing the legs, the segments, the exchange points. He's the one Mm -hmm. that planned it from the beginning, but it's been the crew managing it it went from like start like mm-hmm. since the start line and i didn't even know that that was a conversation so i hopped in the car with team three just with like i was looking at the map and i was like this is kind of far y'all like i don't like y'all keep saying like 16 miles but it's like not only are we not finished with this last segment but there's an additional segment after that segment that is fr- that literally will bring you to the Las Vegas sign, which is an additional four, six miles, something like that. Mm-hmm. So they decide that they want to do, I don't know if they started with mile repeats, but I think we did. It was, and we were on the side of the freeway and the, and we get to this point and Simeon, his ass, he's pumped. Stayed, he was in team one, stayed in the car through team two. And then wait a minute, wait a minute. He goes, do you think they'll let me stay in the car when Team 3 comes in? I'm like, I don't know. Send me just stay in the car and find out. He's like, um, he's like, I think that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> he's so weird. 
but yeah, that's exactly his energy too. Cause like, so anyways, he's in the car again. I, at this point I was like, he must, I, I, I got to a point where I didn't even know what team he was on. Cause he was just all over the place. So mm. like he's in the car still, but my nigga wants to be in the fucking trunk. So he puts down the main, the seat, one of the seats in the back. To give himself some more space. Okay. And every time he hops out, he's like, Can you open the back, please? Okay, can you close the back, please? Oh, it's not closed. It's not opening. Can you can you unlock the door? Can you lock the door? I'm like, bro, I got Karen, you. Karen said he would be running, and at the end of his segment, he would just like hop, hop in. into the trunk, turn around and stay at the runner behind him, and then hit the button. Bruh. <laughs> He was so annoying, but that, okay. That happened one time. Cause the whole, the, before that we were trying to figure out our whole like cadence with the back trunk situation. Cause my nigga, he would be in and out, in and out, but he specifically wanted to do that. He specifically wanted to sit in the back just for easy access in and out. Cause he was like, he had his game face on. We were in the last final, like 20 miles. It turned out to be like more like 24 miles. Okay. Mm. It was a lot of fucking miles. And it was just one mile repeats, one mile repeats. And we're on the freeway. We're no longer on side streets. We're on the proper freeway into Vegas. And I'm have my hazard lights (laughs) on pulling over on the, I mean, luckily it was late at night. So there wasn't crazy traffic, but I was concerned at first. I was like, this is what we're going to do. Okay. But then once we started getting into it, I was fine. And then we're coming up on a hill we get to the top and we start going down and Simeon goes, look, 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 look. He's like, look to the left, look to the left. He's like, there it is, there it is. And we just see Las Vegas lights over the horizon. That downhill was so ignorant. We were so <laughs> hurt about that downhill because we had just got done climbing this mountain. And I mean, the RV was visibly down. tilted forward. Yeah. Like it <laughs> fell forward. I was like, we was just like... We did not just hand it all to them with this fucking crazy damn deal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Simeon knew because he's done this before. And he was like, this is why I'm obsessed with this fucking race. And he was just like, you see that? And it's like, and you just see like the glow of Vegas in the night. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, we're right there. And it seemed a lot closer than it actually was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because we stayed on them one mile repeats for minutes on end, minutes, hours. It was like one after the other after the other. And then we started to approach this other squad because there was, and they were far, far in the distance. I tell you, far. Because we kept, we, and there was a minute where like Devin, Gabe, and Simeon were both like, wow, they're kind of up there. Like we're probably not going to catch up to them. But slowly but surely. Yeah, I think that was that same team that like kept eating, kept eating us up when we was out there. Yeah. Cause we, yeah, exactly. I think there we've had our eye on them for a while. And for a while they were like out of, they were too far away. And then something slowed them down probably. And then they started to be like, we would see them, but we would, it would be too, it would just be just far out enough. But because we were doing one mile repeats, right? They were just between Gabe, Devin, Simeon right? Because that's an added fast mm. person. And then Karen, yes. they were speeding through these downhill repeats, right? And they just got closer and closer and closer. And then there was a moment where like, everybody was like, oh, we could catch up to them. And so then it then it was just on because it was like, fucking Devin go, would go out. And I would, and again, I'm in the car and I need to beat everybody so there's, and they're running like six minute miles. This seems like a lot of time, but then it's like, if there's traffic, whatever, you know, like it was just like, a, I have to make sure that I get here. Like we're passing the runner and then I have to make sure I stop and add a mile to make sure that no one's running more than they need to, you know? And then now we're starting to get into the city. So then there's stop sh- signs and like turns and shit. It was crazy. And like, we started to catch up to the other team And Mm -hmm. there was still probably like eight miles to go. And finally we passed them. And it was like, it was a moment. It definitely was a moment. Cause like, I'm pretty sure it was Gabe. Cause like, cause there was a hill and hill like, and Gabe killed the hill and came down fucking. Oh, Austin was in the car too. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, It it was, was that's why. Austin, Gabe, Simeon. That's why. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, it was like, all of the fastest people on the team in one car 
and it, mm-hmm. and it was insane. And so, and then even Karen yeah. came out. And then the thing is, is there was a moment where it was Karen's turn and I drove up and then I was like, you guys, this is the one of the, like, it was like the first turn. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I was like, do you think Karen wants to run this hill y'all? And then he was like, and someone was like, I they were like, let's just see. And then Karen immediately was like, no, 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 I'm tapping. Like, you know, we like switched her out mm-hmm. and then someone else ran up the hill <clears throat> to keep us ahead of the other team. And mm-hmm. excuse me. And so then like we had another runner sprint up the hill, but they were, they had a, they, they have a really fast female runner and that was who we caught up mm-hmm. with, but that she was very fast. But then for some reason, they would switch out their female runner for like two male runners. And I think one of them was pacing the other. It was very strange because it wasn't just like one or the other. So then, yeah. And then those two were the ones that were like running and catching up to us. Cause then it was Karen's turn and Karen did like, like almost a full mile. Then I hit the corner for her to make sure that she knew where the turn was. But then I was like, I don't think she's going to want to run this. So then like, it was like Austin or one of them, maybe Gabe that popped out and then killed the hill to maintain the, the lead. And then there was another, the other left turn, the final left turn where it's a straightaway to the sign. We had to cross the street and the other team was like coming down the hill and then they crossed the whole freeway first. Like it's like a, it's not a freeway, but like the, the lanes, the, the lanes in Vegas are like, it's like six lanes on one side and it's a regular ass street. And so like you're crossing like 12 lanes of traffic and they cross before us. And then I'm trying to get them to cross. And we're just like, you know, stoplights are a thing. I waited until there was an appropriate time to run it. And I did. And then we just kept on going. And then before we know it, like I'm trying to make a U-turn in a fucking fire, like the, what was it? It was like a, a fire truck was coming out of its office or out of its, out of its like little thing. I feel like you're distracted, but it's okay. It's fine. You know, I'll just wait. Cause I don't like talking to myself again. I'm in it. I promise. It's okay. I'm, I'm like picturing it as you're going and stuff like that. Like just like thinking about like, cause okay, so like we were in the RV and it was fucking the energy was there. Everybody was tired and stuff like that. So like I'm listening to what you're talking about, and I feel like we drove through and. Passed Are you looking this, at the map? That's what, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm just trying to figure out like, how did we not realize? Because I feel like at some point we could exchange with y'all where y'all didn't have to do those extra 10 miles. Like, how did we not no. realize until we got to the Vegas sign that y'all had all of these miles? Like, we hit crazy. 16 like, miles we before we even point. hit. Yeah, like we hit like 16 miles way before we even hit like the city. Like we were That's still on the freeway. Crazy. And so then like, by the time yeah. we hit the city, it was like, none of nobody in the, t- nobody in the car wanted to stop at that point. And Simeon definitely wasn't about to get out of the car. Definitely not. <laughs> and so, and, and at that, at that point we were like ha- doing a ghost race with the team in front of us. And so everybody like had a bone to pick with everybody. Like it was just, just like, in it. there yeah, was right, no in it. way, even if you guys had pulled up in the RV, there's no way they would have been like, yeah, okay. Y'all got it. No way. They're like, I was like, you guys, I think there was like another 10 miles. There was a point where I was like, there's another 10 miles. And I, and I like looked back and they looked at me and I was like, that's like, that means that's at least two more mile repeats between all of you. Luckily there was like five people right in the car. If it was not, it probably would have been a different Simeon story. It made a big difference. Yeah. So like that, just the fact that it was technically just two more miles per person was basically why it it could keep going. But then it started to get real choppy where it was like Austin was popping out and then Austin started to fade a little bit. And then Devin came out to support him. You know what I mean? Like it was kind of like that. Um, And then, um, and then at the end, like, you know, I did a couple of illegal turns, but you know, we was just trying to get the team to the sign. And then, uh, and by the time we got there, yeah, we beat them. It was great. At least by like, what felt like, like five minutes. Um, Hold on, because yeah. I'm going on with your audio. Can you hear me? Yeah. 